So, Vivi, welcome to uh, Shenzhen. This is pretty much where I am whenever I go to film with Winston, right? I thought you were gonna say, welcome to another video. I could do that, but then I'd be ripping off Winston's wife. Today I figured it would be a good topic. Do a little, little casual vlog today, now that we're with the baby. Wait for that piece of shit bus to go by. Next. Three, two, one, and um, I thought we'd talk about, I thought this would be interesting, but the, the best five things about being a foreigner and not just in China, just being a, like an expert or being a, you know, a foreigner that sticks out from the crowd. And the reason I want you in this is that I want you to put yourself in my shoes and think about it. If you're a dude, right? A white dude in China, what do you think you would enjoy the most? Or what do you think would really grade on you? Okay. So not only I need to change my gender, I need to change my race. All of a sudden, I find you less attractive. I, I didn't find you attractive either. I feel like we should probably get divorced. This is messed up. Yeah, pretty messed Still up. Still love you though. You just kissed yourself. You need to take, you need to go That's racial fluid call. and gender fluid, okay? That's a tough call. It's 2017, don't make enemies, Vivi. We, we accept everyone for who they are, okay? <laughs> okay. It's not, a, it's not mess around, okay? Uh, so uh, why don't we go and uh, have a little journey and then talk about it. Okay. Cool. So the whole point of this is we're gonna see how long it takes me to get caught while I fly this drone. Let's take bets, Lena. How long is it, or Lena? How long is it gonna take me to get caught? Right now, do we see any security guards around? We know they're around. I would give you uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. Quincy, what are you calling? Five, Five minutes, okay. I'm gonna say three minutes. Just to see you again, and I've been counting down. So the first thing I wanted to say was um, attention. If you like attention, that is the first best and the first worst thing about China, depending on your perspective. If you want attention from people and you like when people look at you and talk to you, like random strangers, then you'll absolutely love China. China is full of very curious people that are typically not very shy and are very, very curious to see foreigners, right? Especially in smaller towns. So if you travel to any town, People will invite you home into their house, like without even knowing you. They'll compliment you. They'll say you're beautiful and handsome, even if you're not. You could look like, a, you know, the, the butt of a horse. And people will be like, oh, he's so handsome. Oh, she's so pretty, right? So I think just the attention you get mm -hmm. would be awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Now you give me one. What do you think if you were a foreigner in China? What would you love about Chinese people or China? I think I probably, because since I always push this little thing out, and right. people actually treat this like mixed baby. It's like like foreigner. Right. So uh, I actually can experience the thing that like uh, every single thing you can just like go ahead to do a lot, a lot. So of people stuff. cut you a break, basically. Yes, and uh, it saved me a lot of argument and stuff. People just like let me do whatever. I got gotcha. you. Want to do. So if you were a foreigner, basically, you would have the advantage of being having special privileges just quick story actually i was late for my plane to the point where when the taxi pulled up to the ba baoto inner mongolia airport the plane was already getting ready to take off it already pulled down the runway like it was lined up right mm -hmm. the the woman's like oh this foreign guy's here he's late for his flight 20 minutes late like before boarding stopped right and they're like okay and they bust me out to the plane and everyone had to wait 20 minutes for me to get on the plane. No joke, a whole airplane. If this was another video, I would have talked about how much better first tier cities are than third tier cities because that guy actually held the door for me. That would never happen to you in a third tier city. I'm, I would say most people won't hold the door for you. Anyway, number two, I would say the best thing about being an expat here in China is the work opportunities and how to make money. Now, it's weird because when I lived in Taiwan, which is not in mainland China, there wasn't a whole lot of freelance work. It was through like companies. It had to be legitimately through companies, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the issue with that was you got your stable salary, which is higher than a mainland Chinese salary. The thing is, what I'm trying to say 
is that your base salary in, in Taiwan is way higher, right? It was kind of like in America, right? How much a teacher would make was about the same, right? The problem is, when I came to China, like the salary was abysmal. It was like lower than a McDonald's salary. But the opportunities for freelance work, because the legal system kind of doesn't cover illegal work a lot of times. In China, you're only allowed to work on your work visa for that company. But you can do anything. You can be in commercials. You can be a consultant. You can be a model. Like seriously, you can literally just be a model. Like stand outside malls and stuff. Or like do like car shows and things like that. You can fake play the guitar, white monkey jobs, right? Mm. You can freelance, teach people's kids in their own house for like triple the what you'd make in a different country. Hundreds of dollars per hour sometimes, right? You can offer dating consulting to like Chinese guys. There's so many opportunities to make random illegal money here. Yeah, but that's like at some point pissed me off that like the so that opportunity also open to those loser Lao Wai. Did you just call me a loser Lao Wai? <laughs> Seriously, what's wrong with you? So first we got like, basically if you're a normal person, you'll be treated like a model, supermodel. That's number one, so you get the attention. You get mm -hmm. the attention, just like that woman. She's calling, talking to her little baby right there. Number two, it's all the work opportunities you can get to make extra money. Mm -hmm. Now number three, I'm going to say is dating. I'm gonna get some shit for this, but this is what I mean. If you're single and you come to China, and I'm saying if you are a male or a female, male or female, if you are from a foreign country, I'm not gonna say it's easier than the local people's you know, offerings, but I'm gonna say you're gonna have a lot more eyes on you and a lot more people that are interested at least to open a dialogue or conversation with you that, may, that maybe turns into a date. I think especially female. Right. There is quite rare and people are thinking like white girl are really hot. Right, like a white girl in China will get a lot of attention mm -hmm. from Chinese guys. And, yeah, because guys, you know, like, you know, they're more, this is a more manly culture here. That's true. Now, oftentimes this can turn into like language exchange. Well, that's what it'll look like. And so like girls that approached me a lot, a lot of times would say, oh, you're so handsome, we should learn. I can teach you, you know, Chinese, you can teach me English, blah, 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 things like that, right? But at the end of the day, a lot of their intentions were only for that. And yes, it turned into like some sort of romantic endeavor or relationship, right? But it wasn't based on mutual interest and that was a big issue, right? But I'm talking about good things. What I'm saying is that you will find absolutely a lot more dating opportunities from people that find you interesting maybe for random <laughs> random reasons, you know. You'll have a lot of opportunities to date new people is my point. Distance between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice for a tiny little taste, it's five bucks. China, what are you doing with your ice cream? Okay, Vivi, if you were a foreigner in China, what's another thing that you think would be better about your life than your life as a Chinese person? No matter you're a male or female, you would definitely get the equal job opportunity. It's like, in China, it's like a male society. Even you, no matter how hard you actually work for, you are actually like, you, people still treat you like a woman. Actually, get on top. Like, it, you need to work really hard to make people take you really serious. But if you're a foreigner, different. So you're saying a foreign woman would be treated the same as a foreign man. I would agree with that. Yes. I would absolutely, absolutely agree with that. Whereas a, a Chinese woman would be treated very, very differently, right? So that's true. So a foreign woman would be treated... I see like a lot of Chinese dudes get intimidated by foreign women. They get intimidated by them. I'm going to give you, this one's kind of bad, but it's true. I think that as a foreigner in China, you get away with more than maybe you should, or get away, not necessarily bad stuff, just get out of a lot of situations because you can claim that you don't understand. And the thing is, Chinese people don't expect you to understand. They're always saying, oh, Chinese is the most uh, difficult language in the world, so of course he doesn't speak good Chinese. Of course he doesn't know how to use chopsticks, of course, they don't think you're stupid. They actually just think foreigners can't understand stuff in China. So it actually gets you out of a lot of situations. Like one of my friends actually had a couple beers when he was driving. And there's a no tolerance law in China. You will go to jail for 15 days. Your boss, who has all the connections in the world, could definitely get out of anything, right? No, most normal stuff. Could not get out of this kind of no tolerance 15 days in jail, right? 
And at the end of the day, he just literally tell everyone that, you know what, since I've been in jail, I just realized if a man don't get in jail, he's not a man. <laughs> so he made that rule. <laughs> my point is, is that my friend, the cops kind of said, you know what, we can't really do this in China. And watched everyone around him getting pulled over go to jail. And they just kind of let him go. You know, and it's stuff like that. It's like, he, you know, according to the law, he should absolutely have gone to jail. But the cops are kind of like, you know, you don't really understand China. It's fine, right? And a lot of situations are like that. I think that's a really common thing. Dirty foreigners, get out of our peaceful China. This is our beautiful country. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this list of five things that are awesome about being a foreigner in China. Probably do another one about things that are worse for you as a foreigner in China as well. But I thought it would be kind of interesting to get Vivi's perspective because she's not actually a foreigner. But she will be when she moves to America someday. I'm fresh on the phone. I'm gonna be fine. I can finally call you Lao Wai. I'm gonna call you Lao Wai. Anyway, I need to go meet up with uh, some people. And I need to fly some drone in Shenzhen. And we're gonna see if we get caught. What do you think? Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Lawrence, and I'll catch you. Next one. On the next one. <laughs> How hard is that? How hard is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs>